HP workstation user overview. Okay, here we go. We're going through three of HP's workstations. The HP Z840, the 820, as well as the 800. Now, all three of these are absolutely incredible machines. We're going to go through and check why you might want to consider getting one of these machines, pinning your end use. It's the remastered edition of slightly better audio, fingers crossed. Can't really improve the video by much. Okay, here we go. We're going through three of HP's workstations. Very, very important detail. Normally there's a lower air shroud. Works really well to create a dynamic chamber. However, I removed this because the modern GPUs do not fit when this is present. So keep that in mind as well. Very easy to remove. A couple of hooks on the end and a green clip. Now, Checking through the Z800 here, you will see lots of hardware, but definitely keep in mind, we're talking SATA 2.0 and SAS as well. We do have a very nice modular fan unit, integrated power supply there, which is very powerful, but we'll come to that in more detail soon. Looking at the 820, this one in particular has two different GPUs there. We do have uh, PCIe 1.0 and 2.0. Check out the SAS and SATA hotswap connectors there as well. Pretty incredible. Very versatile. There's the 840. We do have quite a modern chipset in there, able to manage PCI 3.0 and SATA 3.0. Very tight tolerances in there, but overall very, very well built machines. And take note, those toolless bays, you can absolutely mount some SSDs as well. So we've got the rear I.O. on the 840 there. Quite well equipped. we got four USB 3.0s. The I.O. there, pretty versatile. Now coming to the 820, you're going to notice there's only two USB 3 ports, so keep that in mind for your modern devices. You may want an expansion card on there. But your graphics inputs are going to change pending the graphics card. And there's the good old Z800. We only have USB 2.0, so keep that in mind when you're scanning through. Okay, so glossing over all three of these, we're going to go through and figure out which one of these is right for you. Which one do you need if you think you need one? Well, let's have a look at them. Starting with the Z800. That's the most logical. Let's go back in time, 2008, 2009. This is it. Now, this particular one has the X5670 V1 CPU, 48 gigabytes of RAM, which is pretty solid. The Z820 here has the E2690 V1 CPU, which is a little bit aged. There are more modern CPUs you can fit, and 32 gigabytes of RAM. And then there's the HP Z840. Now, in this particular trim, we've got very, very capable E2660 V3 CPUs and 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. There's also a few other add-on cards. That is my main video editing machine and it's a fairly capable machine of that. Now, let's go back in time here, the Z800. Let's have a look at this. What does it propose for us today? Well, this particular machine is still ideal for gaming on a budget. Maybe you want to do some 1080p gaming. This is the machine for you. Design, well, if you're doing long, long work hours, this could be the right machine. They're pretty power efficient. Talking about power efficiency, you can definitely use it as a file server as well. And if you are a video editor, or if you're wanting to be a video editor, this could be the machine for you. They're really, really affordable, and they make for a powerful platform. Now let's have a quick look at this memory slash CPU fan shroud. So this particular one is off the Z800. It's a little bit more simplistic than what we have on the others, but we'll check those soon. But for now, let's have a look. How do we fit this particular shroud? Now generally it's fairly straightforward. You keep an eye out for these two green clips and you want to make sure that they align with the cutouts within the case. You'll see them there. Right there, very important to match that. And off to the back there, there's that power point as well, power connection. It's very important to get that one aligned. I think when that aligns, all the rest will just pop in as it should. Perfect. And there's a close up there. Okay, so far so good. So let's Wait for the click okay there it is so it's now clicked we are secure very important to look for that but check the alignment there quite delicate on the z800 now the next and probably most important thing we need to do is focus on the power supply check out the cpu coolers there as well now a little bit limited on the cpu coolers but eventually you may be able to find a way to do a modification there so power supply removal this is completely toolless you'll notice the clip design there these just slide out 
And now for its housing. A little bit dusty in there. I promise I try and clean this out as often as possible, although this machine is currently not being utilized. We've got the three power connections at the back. Do keep an eye out for those. If they break out, you'll have troubles. And there's our speaker. Great for making better tunes, although you do want a better speaker. Now, this particular power supply is 89% efficient. 110 watt is the, sorry, 1110 watt is the rated power and very, very efficient power supply. Now, key things to note on this particular power supply and relevance for you today will be the max output on the two six pin power cables. So definitely not gonna have enough to run something like an RTX 4090 perhaps, but should be enough to cover a graphics card that's pretty powerful, maybe something like the RTX 3070 or thereabouts. Your mileage may vary. Take note, there is a lower specification power supply, the 850 watt power supply, so make sure you've got the more powerful one if you can get your hands on it. Now for refitment, very straightforward. These just slide into place. And you've again got that clip and it should make an audible tone once you get it completely set. Now, if you don't get the click, it's probably not set correctly and you'll get an error code for that particular event. So definitely check for a flush fitment. That's looking pretty solid there now. Excellent. Okay, quick demo. How do we remove your hard drives? Well, super, super easy, completely toolless design. We have these very nice plastic caddies here with vibration reduction uh, grommets there as well, which is quite handy. So a little bit of flex here, but do be gentle on these. Too much flex and they can snap. So be very gentle on those, but more than enough flex to get your hard drive mounted and very easy clip. And notice the uh, technique there as well. So nine times out of 10, you're probably gonna have hard drives come supplied in your machine if you're buying these second hand. This particular one is a Seagate Cheetah or more specifically a Dow branded uh, Cheetah hard drive. Very old hard drive now, but still pretty pretty spunky hard drive for its time so very useful particularly for things like file server maybe although high speed drives maybe a bit of gaming okay hpz 820 now you're gonna notice quite the step up in the overall appearance of this machine it's pretty well suited to gaming maybe 4k gaming you can push it a little bit you can also handle very large workloads with your ram and you also have a very efficient power supply there, at least 90% efficiency. Now, video editing, this would be perfect for someone wanting to make video. These machines are built to do exactly that. Now, SSDs can be mounted, no excuse for that one floating around. Definitely check out the connector. Now, CPU fan shroud. This must be the standout feature because this is way, way, way more intricate compared to the Z800. We have six fans. Yours may only come with five if you only have one CPU installed, but you do need six to be able to run dual CPUs. Now there is a nice cooler option here, the liquid coolers. Keep an eye out for those, but they are pretty expensive and may not always be worth it, but keep an eye for them. I haven't tested them myself, but I am certain they work really well being that they are HP. Now, in terms of reinstallation, we want to keep an eye out here for the power connector. It's off in the top right hand corner. This one is far, far easier than the Z800. Pretty much a perfect fit. You cannot go wrong. Just make sure to give it a good nudge to make sure it's seated. If it's not seated, you will get an error code. Now, a couple of other details here for the power supply. So power supply on the Z820 is a little bit more powerful than the 800. And theoretical maximum there of 648 watts if you desire that much power, which is tremendous. But definitely aim for a little bit lower. But most modern GPUs will be covered without trouble. And take note, there is a 850 watt low power um, power supply as well. So keep an eye for that. So removal completely toolless as is for the 800. It's very easy to remove. No complaints. Oh, that one's a little bit dusty. Definitely got to do a D-dust here. It's okay. The uh, machine does work really hard when it's in use. So scanning through there, we got our three power connectors there for our power supply and there's our little built-in speaker as well which is a nice add-on to have should you choose to use it so there's the power supply of interest it's a pretty well designed full sheet metal casing very very efficient and overall a incredible incredible power supply so these do come at a little bit of a cost so keep that in mind if you do end up with some trouble on these they are kind of expensive you do have the led indicator there for activity or power so in terms of refitment, incredibly straightforward. Reverse of removal, you've got a very tight fit, precise as can be. 
Same thing with the clip, we want to apply gentle pressure until you hear the click. Make sure it's nice and flush and you're good to go. Check the flush fit there as well, very important if it doesn't fit flush, could be the connectors at the back not quite matching up with their ports. Okay, on to the HPZ840. This is a very powerful machine. We got 64 gigabytes of RAM. We have the Intel E2660 V3 CPUs. A couple of add-ons there. We got a GPU that's really powerful and a very nice Aorus expansion card for NVMEs. Now, ideal uses here. This is well suited to large workloads. You can expand the memory up to two terabytes. This particular one has a 90% efficient power supply, very, very ideal for long work hours. Perfect for someone maybe wanting to create video. Let's have a look at this CPU fan shroud. Now you're going to notice a lot of similarities here to the A20. It is really, really similar in design. The overall shape and size are almost identical. There are subtle differences here. Take note, we still have a six fan design and two of those would be the ones directly on top of your CPU coolers. So you want to keep an eye for those. So check out the details. If you do want to replace your CPU coolers, check out those part numbers there. These fans are available as well, particularly if your model comes with one, you may want to upgrade to two. And yes, we got an NVMe adapter there. Quite a few expansion cards as well. Check out some of my related videos for more information about those. And uh, lots of upgrade options here, including things like upgraded coolers and a lot more RAM as well. So definitely check out my video on the 3D Vapor CPU coolers for the 840. I believe they may be compatible for the 820 as well, which is kind of cool. Okay, let's see if we can fit the fan shroud. So very similar to the 820, cannot go wrong on installation. A couple of small things to keep an eye out for. The power connector here does need to align with our connection in the top right corner there. So keep an eye out for that. That's a general guide for where to place your cover. But the most delicate part here is the cables that you're going to find in the bottom right corner there. So just keep that in mind, especially if you've got extra expansions. If it doesn't quite click, you will get an error code. So definitely make sure that's fully seated. Looks okay there, maybe slightly off, but generally go for the flush fitment. Okay, that's looking really tidy. Now let's scope out the power supply. So how do we remove this? Well, it's identical to the others. Not the same model necessarily, but very similar in design. We've got our latch and very simple slide removal. Now this is a 1125, you can put out up to 14, sorry, 1450 watt on a 240 volt main. And there's our three connectors at the back there. Make sure those remain nicely secured if they go out of place or if those pins break, you'll lose your ability to mount your power supply and there's our internal speaker. Power supply. So key thing here, we, we get three six pin GPU power connectors. They're all on a single rail each which is great that gives you the ability to output a lot of power for your modern gpus over 600 watts which is incredible and probably around 550 or so if you're on the safe side but very nice sleek design here full sheet metal casing we do have a, a power indicator led at the back as well reinstallation just the reversal of removal make sure to align it perfectly it slides into place now we do have the clip function here, although I have noticed on the 840 it doesn't tend to actually make a noise, or at least in my one it doesn't, maybe yours will. But take note of that as well, should fit nice and flush when you're all done. Okay, power supply reinstalled. So very, very capable, absolutely look at one of these machines for your future uses. Now hard drive bays are identical between all of these, there are slightly different grommets between them. Uh, this particular 840, I have 8 terabyte NUS drive, or at least one of them in there. Very, very well suited to a machine that's running almost all the time. So keep that in mind as well. These uh, NUS drives are really, really well suited to these workstations. So very easy for refitment. Those slide in and out without any troubles. Now we do have four hard drive bays and the ability to expand. You can fit very large GPUs in there as well. Now in terms of these shrouds, Something to keep in mind, sometimes they don't always fit as well as they should. Keep an eye on that power connector. The power connector is the key for your alignment and it should just gently fit. The only real hiccup here is that you don't give it a full nudge, it doesn't quite connect and the other thing is the cables in the bottom right corner. So just keep an eye out for them. 
If you do have trouble fitting that, just go through, move or slightly adjust these cables. The more cables you've got running up to the top through expansion, things like your front media hub or as you can see the floating SSD there, definitely mount that in a bracket. But these particular components will then slot into place but we do have to keep an eye on those cables, especially because it's on top of the RAM module. Okay, that's looking good. And reseated. Yeah, so nice gully there. Make sure those cables are seated in that gully. Could help to do some cable management. Throw a cable tie or two in there. Now, same deal for the 840. You're going to notice the shroud is very similar in design. I think there is a subtle difference there. We still got the power connector at the back. And just make sure to align that. Keep an eye on the cables in the bottom right and keep an eye out for that power connector as well. So these slide in quite gently. You shouldn't feel too much resistance. They are pretty perfectly cut. And just check to make sure that you get a nice flush fit. Now those cables, definitely problematic, but cable ties could solve that. The 800 is far more forgiving but there is a bit more tolerance there, so keep an eye out for that as well. Now, side panels. What do we have on these panels? Well, you've got a lot of information. You've got your motherboard schematic, you've got your RAM load order, and there's even some diagnostic trouble codes. So keep that in mind. If you do run into some problems, always go to that side panel and check what you need to do. Things like the memory load order is really important, and you'll notice there are very, very clear schematics on here that'll help you through most of your basic setup. Definitely check out the differences between single processor and dual processor. There are some key differences for memory load order in particular. Okay, there it is. Side panels. Now what else can we expect from these side panels? Well, we also have a latch on each one and you'll notice the latch is pretty well secured. Now generally you will have that lower fan shroud. Now as I mentioned early on, I removed this for clearance. Modern GPUs do not clear. Even something like a GTX 970 doesn't clear. It's incredible. Now, the security latch is really useful. They tend to be really easy to refit. Take note, the key in my experience is the same between all of them, so maybe not the best security after all, but it is handy to have that feature, being able to lock up your machine if you were in, say, a more public situation. Okay, these latches are pretty straightforward. Do recommend using two hands for flush fitment. And just as a demo, this is how it could go wrong if you're only using one hand while your other hand is holding the camera. Pretty delicate here. But check this out. It's a very important. I recommend two hands, one off to each side. That'll help. If it doesn't quite fit, best to remove the panel. It doesn't always work just to wedge it to try and get a fitment, but we'll give it a nudge here. One hand. Okay, perfect. Generally very sturdy latches, never had any troubles. Okay, those are the three most prominent workstations from HP. That was the remastered video. Let's look at the specifications in detail. Pause on this if you want to see more detail. Lots of good detail there. Now, pros for the 800. Low cost, expandable, powerful CPU. You can fit modern GPUs, so keep an eye on that. Now, the hardware is really aged. It only has DDR3 memory, USB SATA and SAS, so maybe not so great, but lots of expandability. So still pretty good value for a budget gaming rig. Now, A20 Pro is relatively low cost, super expandable, powerful GPU options and powerful uh, PSU. Cons, DDR3 memory, we do have some USB 3 ports, but generally it's still on PCI 2.0, so that is a bit of a bottleneck. You can expand these, lots of room for upgrades. HPZ 840, very expandable, powerful, powerful uh, PSU, lots of options to upgrade. We've got DDR4 memory, but it is getting aged now, 266. 2666 megahertz is the highest specification so these are absolutely great value consider one of these machines in your application i am certain you will not be disappointed now related content what else can we expect well if you enjoyed that video you may also enjoy the video on the z cooler installation on the hp z840 check it out it's a really cool video now upcoming video quick teaser pcie nvme cooling method this is a revisit on the cooling method. That's becoming really, really tough to fit all of this, but we'll check that out in a future video. Stay tuned for more content. I'll see you on the next video.